And reporting live from Area 51, we have the latest episode of the Channel Chasers podcast. As always, I am your host, Jay, and joining me are my two friends, Brian and Tony. Or Brian 12 and Tony 273. I don't know which Tony this is. I, I mixed up the batch. Maybe I got it right this time. No, it is for the 451st. You forgot. Right, right. Or See, did you? Yeah. How do I know you didn't get your own designation wrong? What's up? I had dude on my foot. Fair. <laughs> Welcome to this new episode of the Channel Shares Podcast. So, I'm going to be real with you guys. Uh, like I mentioned to the guys off camera, personally, I am binged the fuck out. We've been doing a lot of, like, you know, um, several episode shows which obviously binging is never a problem for me but binging on top of work and streaming it, it and editing when i'm doing all the editing it's a bit much in games yeah oh yeah in our secret project yep it's a bit much so i needed to like slow down and like i still wanted to do the podcast but i wanted to do something like easier that you know wouldn't be as like dense as covering an entire season of a tv show so i decided that for august we're all gonna cover movies and this is our first one of the month which is the netflix original film they cloned tyrone uh that is the movie we'll be covering and uh, we'll have a wide variety of other movies to cover this month as well mostly on streaming services because you know, going out uh, out to the theater every week is hella expensive. I guess, luckily for us, also, August is uh, Netflix, even though they're POS for the strike stuff, but they are coming out with a lot of movies lately, so we're going to be talking about them. Yep. And, I mean, you know, people, uh, like, actor, actors and writers have come out and said, like, nah, it's fine uh, if you guys, like, you know, review movies mm -hmm. and spread word of mouth. As long as you're not, like, mm -hmm. contracted by the studios, it's not affecting us. In fact, we want these movies to do well so that, the, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, execs know that they need us. So it's not just, really, you know, standing against the strike. Just don't take paid brand deals. Exactly. Or, like act or write in anything for a studio non-youtube yep but youtube is free game uh so yep. anyways before we get into the full discussion on the movie we're gonna jump right into the news with brian okay so that actually is a good transition to our first story because uh, we have a bit of a uh, writer strike, actor strike update, or at least writers. So the WGA met up with the collective group representing the big streamers, and they didn't come to an agreement. Damn. So the strike is just little side things about that. One is if uh, y'all follow the the uh, streaming app Dropout... I have no idea what that is. Formerly College Humor. Oh, uh, I didn't know it had that. Uh, I didn't know College Humor made an app. Yep, I'm subscribed to it. Uh, they do a lot of uh, cool different various shows with different people from College Humor. A lot of them comedy based. The most popular one is Dimension Twenty. Wait, is that where They're, like Geek and Sundry is now? Or no? No. Like basically it's where um you get stuff like um actually if you've ever heard of that. Oh where it's a uh, nerdy trivia show type thing. Uh Make some noise where it's like a game show where people are challenged to uh, make different noises or impressions and stuff, but obscure stuff. And then um, 
the one that I think you'd like the most beyond the like Roll Twenty stuff, Jay, is uh, it's called Dirty Laundry. Okay. It's a uh, four either comedians or like comedian adjacent people sit down and sit down with the host, two hosts, and uh, they sip on a adult cocktail, and the the main host will read off stories and the secret stories like almost take to your grave weird shit that you've done. Okay. And the others have to guess whose story it belongs to. Oh, that's fun. Interesting. And if you get it if you get it right, you get a point. But if the person manages to go through it without anyone guessing them, they get three points. Oh nice. Oh. That's fun. For sure. So it's yeah. like uh, basically a talk showy, game showy version of Ah, uh, what was Never Have I Ever? That? that and also there was a game show of uh Basically, you have to figure out who the person is. Oh, you're talking about the you're on... talking about the dating game. No, not the dating game, but it's a uh, you have three individual panel, usually celebrities, and then you have this kooky individual, where you basically have to figure out if they're telling the truth of what they do or they're just bullshitting you. I don't know. I have no idea what that is. You oh, lost. Me. I think I remember what you're talking about, but I don't remember the name. But anyway. Their their most popular big thing, like I said, is Dimension Twenty. The uh, usually ran by Brendan Lee Mulligan, D and D games, and uh, the the reason why I brought up the app is because they went on strike too because they're actors and stuff, and they thought it was under the uh, thing of people that were supposed to be striking. Well, apparently they're not, and so they're back into working and making stuff. But they highly support the strikers. Yeah, you know, um, they don't actually have a, like, content creators union. <laughs> yeah, that, that... it's iffy. It yeah. depends on, like, your production, I think. Yeah. Company and stuff. Mm -hmm. A rumor about the strike, which I'm only bringing up because it's part of the Umbrella News story, that we don't know for sure. And if it is, Big Boo and I will bo boycott both of these. It's uh, rumors going around that for uh, Paddington 3 and Sonic 3, they're going to go ahead with non-union actors. Oh, damn. So they're going to recast everybody? Rumor. But uh, one thing that is official that I found out, which they could argue is not related to the strike, but I think it might be, is uh, Disney said that as part of their celebration for Disney 100, they're re-releasing Frozen into the theater. Oh, wow. Okay. They're desperate. Let it go, Disney. Let it go. But uh, moving on to our next news story, because that was all just the first one. These other ones will be quick. Uh, this one I just wanted to point out, because it's not really a news news story, but just... Wanted to point out the integrity of an actor. Okay. Leslie David Baker, who uh, played Stanley on The Office. Mm -hmm. Back around 2000, said that uh, he wanted to crowdfund a Stanley spinoff where it would be about Stanley having to jump out of retirement to help his son with his business and people backed it like wildfire the fans raised over 110k dollars nice mm -hmm. however due to covid the strikes going on right now and just overall pressure from the actor he decided to uh, not go ahead with it, but as like not going ahead with it, 
he also has pledged to return all 110k donations. Good for him. That shows some great integrity right there. For sure. And in a time like this with the strikes and stuff, I just wanted to point out a good person. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, next up, another good person, Lin-Manuel Miranda announced his next thing, which is not TV or movie related. It's a musical? Yes. All right. He will be adapting a popular 80s movie into a screenplay. Okay. Okay. The Warriors. What? (laughs) Warriors, come out and play. (laughs) Oh, shit. Nice. And uh, this last one is a kind of callback to uh, a lost episode. If you you two co-hosts remember, we did a whole thing about about like how uh, they're doing all these different uh, movies now that Barbie was a success. Mm-hmm. Well, a different company in a similar field has announced that they're doing a movie based on their popular franchise. Oh, okay. And you actually mentioned it in the that, episode. Um, oh, really? Okay. Jay, it's the Friendship Ender. What? Uno? Mono- Monopoly. Oh! <laughs> Monopoly? Okay, that one I can actually see as a movie, so hear me out. I can actually kind of picture that one as a movie, because literally all it has to do is be about a shape, it's like a shape, uh, you know, a guy who mm-hmm. starts uh, who starts off from the bottom and then, so, uh, you know, slowly but surely turns into a shady, corrupt businessman, you know, buying everybody's properties. Which, uh, fun fact for y'all out there, if you didn't know, your, uh, board game history. That was not the original plot of the, uh, original Monopoly. Oh? Uh, the woman who created it long way back, like, I think this was even, like, right before the Great Depression. Ironic. She, she created, I forgot what she called it now, but it was a, Known by a different name, but similar vibe, similar board, everything. And it was about like anti corruption and anti like uh landlord stuff. Oh, irony. But <laughs> there you yep. go. Yep, because from what I heard, the original way that you played it was you played it like you do play Monopoly, but then you try to see once you get to, like, the end of the game, who can, uh, like, feed the people or something? Like, something about being, like, a community and who can reach that first? Oh, no wonder that didn't sell! That's not as fun! Yeah, It it was supposed to be a commentary. I get it, but, like, you know, stomping on on your friends being like, alright, bitch, (laughs) you're on my land, pay up! That's way more fun. Also, also, the original art for the for like the for a lot of the popular game pieces like Do Not Pass Go, all of that, mm-hmm. were the artist was never paid. Oh damn! Because oh. I'm gonna be real with you, audio only listeners, you can't see it, but I'm not white, so this is so Monopoly is one of the only times I can be like, get off my land, pay me. Broke bitch. <laughs> These two could do it. I can't. But oh, I fucking hate Monopoly. Are you kidding me, dude? Hell no. It's yeah, a, it's, a fun, it's a fun game. It is not. It is pain. Oh yeah. It's all, I, I'm look, more look, with Tony. Look, you. Uh, well, clearly you guys aren't nearly as petty as I am because, like, Monopoly is a game where petty people thrive. Well, then you would get along with my father, because but... he's the prettiest bastard I know. <laughs> See? See? And and on that note, we're done with news. All right. So, 
Moving on from news, let me check my Sorry. watch that does not exist. It's that time again. It is screen time. Screen time, for those new to the podcast, is the segment where we all talk about the different media we've consumed in between podcast episodes. I'll go first, since mine is pretty quick. Um, most of the media that I've consumed uh, in between podcast episodes uh, are comics, because I recently uh, purchased a subscription to the DC... In the Universe Infinite app, this is not an ad, but I will sing its praises because uh, I'll be honest, uh, you know, I've been a complainer about the state of comics for a few years now, especially in the past recent years, but I will say DC has really turned themselves around. They kicked out all the people who just worked for corporate and didn't give a fuck about the actual or the comics, uh, you know, writers that our actual fans of comics are in charge and are writing and they actually have a roadmap. Everything is actually connected. We're actually using parts of continuity. Continuity matters now. People are aging. People are growing and developing. So I've been really, really liking the state of DC right now. And I was like, you know what? I am spending way too much time on comics every week going to the shop. Let me see if I can save some money on this shit. When I found DC uh, Universe Infinite, it, uh, you know, if you buy the Ultra Plus plan, you get the entire DC Comics library plus the new releases that come out every week. And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> this will definitely save me money. I just got to drop like 120 bucks for the year and I get everything cool i'll take this and so uh what i read this week was uh night terrors issue number one the uh, first issue of the main night terrors book and boy was this amazing look dead man is one of my favorite dc characters of all time uh, so the fact that this is just an event starring dead man possessing batman's body to kick ass and take names is fucking awesome. Uh, we get to find out more about Insomnia, the main villain of the event, and uh, something cool really happens at the end. Uh, spoiler alert for Night Terrors number one. Uh, Dead Man actually jumps into Insomnia's body and he discovers basically kind of like what he's after and like he saw a vision of somebody in Insomnia's mind and he's like, all right, well, I need to team up with somebody to help me figure this out. This has to do with the uh, the realm of dreams. And this guy was in Insomnia's mind. So, luckily for Boston, Batman kept some of the Lazarus resin from the Lazarus Planet event. So he uses it to bring back a certain hero from the Golden Age. One Wesley Dodds, a.k.a. The Sandman. That's right. It's a it's a Sandman, Dead Man team up. The fucking Sandman from the Golden Age. I'm hyped. This event is so cool. The art is so trippy. I nice. love it. Uh, other stuff I read this week uh, from DC uh, were some of the Night Terror tie-ins. I read Night Terror's Batman, which is basically just kind of Batman reliving his, like, parents' death over and over again. Uh, there's a really trippy image where, like, Batman vomits up a gun that's in the shape of a bat. Super Weird. fucked up. I loved it. Uh, so that was cool. Um, the other Night Terrors issue, uh, tie-in issue that I read was Night Terrors Robin, which stars Tim and Jason. Uh, it's really interesting. The two nightmares are completely different. So, in Tim's nightmare, Tim actually relives a, a traumatic memory from his life that almost everybody forgets about, except for me, because I hated that event, and I hated that this had to happen to Tim. A certain event from Identity Crisis... The death of Jack Drake. Oh, that shit was stupid. Yeah. So Tim has to relive over and over again Captain Boomerang murdering his father. 
So uh, he has oh, to deal. To be fair, at that same time, Jack did murk uh, Digger. Though. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean he killed him in return. They both died, mm -hmm. but still. Yeah, it's some ridiculous nonsense. Um, still trauma. So yeah, yeah. That, so yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot of tough stuff to deal with. Jason's. I'm. Sh you get three guesses to what Jason's is. Hmm. And... Crowbar beating the Joker, being yeah. revived by the Walker's Pit. Yep, be yep. Anything, really. All of those, literally all of those. Uh, and, and so, and so, like basically, the the nightmare image is like you see a zombie Jason breaking out of a grave, holding a crowbar, ready to beat Jason's ass. Yikes! And then Jesus. Jason is surrounded by. A bunch of other like clones of Red Hood that represent all the dark aspects of himself, and then he realizes that uh, in this nightmare, and he's actually taken on a lot of the characteristics that he hated from the Joker. So is he becoming the monster? There was the whole metaphor and what they were going for, and it was really interesting. I like that. I like that issue a lot. Very good. The Captain Marvel issue uh, was also very good. Basically, it actually stars Mary, and Mary, um, Mary's nightmare basically has her brother turn evil. He uh, Billy ends up looking like Captain Adam. I almost thought it was Captain Adam until she called him Billy, and I was or not Captain Adam, Black Adam. I almost thought it was Black Adam until she actually called him Billy, and I was like, oh, sh that's act that's evil Billy. Oh shit. And Billy murders all their step siblings, and like sets Damn. and sets the house on fire. And Mary's powers don't work. She ends up shazamming herself to wake herself up, or did she? The plot twist at the end is: is she still in the dream? Uh, but Billy whispers something in her ear that like breaks her. I'm very curious to see what that is. I like. I need to know. I'm. Because I, I really like Mark Waid's Shazam run that's been going on so far. Not just because he actually refers to him as the captain. Because fuck you, he'll always be Captain Marvel. Um, but yeah, uh, that was really good. Uh, some of, uh, Another issue that I read was uh, World's Finest Teen Titans number one. Really good stuff. Uh, it's by Mark Wade as well. Uh, it is a spinoff of his World's Finest uh, Batman and Superman series that is set in the past. Uh, this uh, stars all the original Titans in their, like, you know, er, like, first outings. So the team is uh, Dick Grayson Robin, Donna Troy Wonder Girl, Roy Speedy, Garth Aqualad, you know, all the classics. It's really cool. We get to see kind of them like exploring who they are as people, kind of figuring out themselves and like we get to see kind of glimmers of the future Nightwing, like stuff that, you know, Dick would later incorporate as Nightwing, same with Donna, Roy, and uh Wally. It's really cool. I love the artwork. Good stuff. Um, other shit I read. The Zatanna one was really cool for Night Terrors. Uh, she had this really just terrifying encounter with a zombie version of her dad. Uh, basically, she's trying to save Red Tornado. Um, because apparently they have a thing. And, uh, like, Red Tornado and her are immune to what's going on because she cast a no sleep spell on herself and red tornado's a robot he doesn't sleep uh but yeah she ends up having to basically deal with all her fuck ups throughout the you know the hist her history in the DC universe which once again is <laughs> identity crisis boy identity crisis sucked didn't it mm -hmm. uh it did and uh, yeah so that was really interesting again i just love the fact that like continuity is being used it's just it feels good it feels like the the real dc universe again um and lazarus planet actually matters because it connects directly into the next event i was like oh this is dope um 
other stuff I read. That was pretty much it in terms of like the the DC series. But uh, yeah, like I said, I've been really getting into DC again, man. And there's just a lot of good stuff to offer. Go to your local comic shop if you have the money and you're not a broke bitch like me. But if you are a broke bitch like me and you love DC, you know, paying that money once a year to get all of those comics on your, your, you know, your computer or tablet, totally worth it. Not an ad, but I will plug a service that I think is super useful to the audience if I think it's worth plugging. So that's pretty much it for me. Maybe someday it could be an ad. Hopefully. But only after Warner Brothers wises up. Look, I'm not even talking to Warner Brothers. DC, y'all are separate. So hey, look. Y- y- no, they y- aren't. No, I mean like the, the comic stuff is separate from the strike stuff. Like Warner Brothers, the but studio they're does. Owned by... They're owned by Warner Brothers, but the comics are a whole separate thing than the TV shows. So that has nothing to do with the strike. I'm but just anyway. saying. I'm just saying, DC. Yeah, you, you came to some of my friends. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know you've seen my shit. I, ha- I haven't been nearly as negative to y'all as Marvel. So hit your boy up. Just don't. Let me talk to Bendis. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Brian, what have you been consuming in between podcast episodes? All right. So, uh, actually, decent amount. Uh, I have uh, two movies and one TV show. Okay. All right. So, movies. For my birthday, uh, we actually uh, sat down and finally watched... Um, Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Nice. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too. It maybe went on for a little too long. And uh could have done without the uh don't want to say without spoiling, but uh Iron Man scene. Yep. If you know you know. Yep. But uh Overall, I did really enjoy it, and I think it might be the second or third best uh, Transformer film overall. Bumblebee is still the best one. Yes. Yes. I I just want to make that clear. Okay, we're on the same page. Yes. But also, uh, controversial films. Uh, It was just added to Peacock, so uh, I watched Super Mario Brothers movie. How is that controversial? Everybody it's loved it. I loved it. Well, it got a little bit of controversy in the beginning because oh, of wait, oh, yeah, because, Chris Pratt. Well, yeah, because that trailer was bad and Chris Pratt wasn't actually, you know, it was Chris Pratt just using his normal voice and it was weird. <laughs> yep. Yep. And that, I will say that I actually really did enjoy it. It it's not perfect, and definitely two voices are kind of like not good and like oh, okay. Which ones unsettling. were which ones were off for you? Because you're the last one on the panel to have seen the movie, so Mario somewhat and Donkey Kong. I nah. I feel like Donkey Kong fit the personality that Donkey Kong had. I do, but did they have to give him the stereotypical Seth Rogen laugh? Dude, it's Seth Rogen. He can't not laugh like that. That's just how he laughs. If you got Seth Rogen and he's going to laugh at stuff, that's what it's going to sound like. I know. It's just... Like, it's just for me, I felt like it was a little off. That's all. It's not him doing a bit. That's just how he laughs. I can't do nothing about that. But it's nothing against Seth Rogen himself, because... I will say that he's brilliant behind the scenes, and I have liked some of his other voice acting. Like, I love him as Alan the Al- Alien. Yeah, uh, man. But uh, yeah, it was. I, I thought you know, like I mentioned before in a previous screen time episode, like the movie. Yeah. Is, the movie's great. It's like it's a kids' film, so like, you yeah. know, it's it it doesn't do anything groundbreaking, but it's fun. It's re- it's really fun, and it. And uh, granted, I haven't like fully watched a lot of them, but I will go out on a limb here and say best Illumination film in years. Uh, at least since Despicable Me 2. 
At least since Despicable yeah. Me 2, for sure. That's been years, dude. I, I know it's been years, but it, yeah. They've uh, done a three and a uh, prequel since. I know. But, uh, I, 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 I've, I, I, uh, I've seen them. Although the third one isn't but, too bad. Uh, but yeah. No, it, it's not too bad. But anyway, I, I liked it. Yeah. I sure. really did enjoy it, and I can't... And, I can't wait for the inevitable sequel. I want to see. A, if, I want to see a Charlie Day Luigi Mansion spinoff movie. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. That does sound for like. sure. And uh, especially if uh, the fan castings come true, because uh, have you all seen the fan castings for uh, for a Wario and Waluigi? No. Ooh. Are they playing on Danny DeVito. Well, Danny DeVito has to play Wario. That's a duh. That's a given. And Pedro Pascal. Okay. I didn't, okay, I didn't expect that one for Waluigi, okay. but all right. My only condition Luke. is Walu he also has to voice Waluigi when Waluigi eventually comes to Smash. Fair. That is a Which, fair thing to say. People are theorizing that we might get a, like, avenger style shared universe that will culminate in a smash movie i mean like what was it was brawl brawl did that for their storyline yeah yeah like it was, it was a very interesting i had fun with that story mode yeah that oh yeah was the same and uh speaking about video games uh -huh. i watched another video game adaptation twist and metal oh i <laughs> forgot that was out it's also on Peacock. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm saying I forgot the I forgot the episode dropped. I actually really enjoyed it, like a lot. The two leads, Anthony Mackie and Stephanie Beatrix, have amazing chemistry. I will admit that the trailers do not sell it at all. They didn't put the best parts in the trailers. They like almost did the opposite. Oh dang. Yep, I saw, saw a review from Moist Critical. He theorizes that they did it on purpose to tank it. Ah. It's really good. Thomas Hayden Church is in it. Oh, cool. He's the, I guess you could say, primary villain of the season. Agent Stone, or at least a version of Agent Stone. Okay. Who's video games. And he does really good. Sweet Tooth is really good. They pulled a Darth Maul. Okay. Samoa Joe played the physical embodiment of him. Mm -hmm. But Bojack Horseman, Lego Batman himself, Will Arnett, voiced him. He He's really cool. There's also a, another villain in there that keep spoilers, but I really enjoyed them. They had a lot of cameos from the video game characters like Bloody Mary and all that say so even more would be spoilers they did introduce this cool thing where the convoy where it's in this post-apocalyptic area it's four like big cargo trucks mm -hmm. that are keep moving never stop and they actually have like walkways from each trailer and they're just this traveling commune that never stops oh it was also really cool it's bloody. We're past the minute, so I can say this. They say fuck so many times. Like, you could have a counter for how many times that they say fuck. Like, I would not suggest a drinking game unless for you're how darts. many times they say fuck. Yeah, unless you're dark. It's bloody. It's funny. There's a lot of action. It's not perfect, but it's fun. And if they get a season two, oh my god. Oh, also, I forgot the real actor's name here, but there is a little bit of a Brooklyn Nine-Nine reunion in this too. Oh yeah? Jason Mendoza actor is in it. Okay. Jason Mendoza. The, the one that marries Rosa. Oh! Gotcha. That guy. He, or almost marries Rosa. That guy. His actor is in it too, and oh my god, he plays a preacher. Oh, cool. I will just leave it at that. So is it a binge drop, or is it like a episode by episode? Yes. Oh, it's a binge drop. Cool. It is, I believe it is 10 30-minute episodes. Hmm. Interesting. 
but it was really fun. Wasn't perfect, but I really did enjoy it. Tony, what have you been consuming in between podcast episodes? Well, I I was on a bit of a DC kick myself, much like you, Jay. Mm-hmm. And I took it upon myself to watch at least four or five different DC animated movies. Nice. That was- wow. Let's see if I can actually rem- remember what they were. Let's see. I mean, One of them was just as- I was going to say, if you could just go to Max, you could probably look at your watch history. I do know that uh, I almost watched it just out of uh, shits and giggles, but I do know that uh, the Ruby one just came out. I'm not touching that no. foot pole. Nope. Uh, but yeah, you were saying? But- War. Uh, Batman Hush. Gotham by Gaslight. Uh, what was that? The... The Fear That Came to Gotham? Oh, yeah, that's the Lovecraft one that I talked about in the previous screen time. I love that one. The Doom That Came to Gotham. Doom That Came to Gotham. Uh, else? Oh, both of the duology of the death and reign of the Superman. Nice. That was solid. Nice. Six. I actually started with the reign of the Superman. No, Death of Superman. Great adaptation using New 52 Superman. That was great. Loved that idea. Yeah. And the Rain Superman. Okay. I actually like yeah, Rain. I actually like Rain better than Death. Um, yeah. Yeah. We actually um Personally somewhere me, in the ether did a uh, channel chasers about it. No, I don't think it was a channel chasers. I think we uh, we appeared on an episode of Media Madness. Was what it was uh, back when Comic Frontline oh. did Media Madness. I because I thought I thought we also did one on Channel Chases where we covered both of them. Maybe personally though, I liked the various different ideas that they did to make it fit in the new Fifty Two continuity, which was cool that they did that. But something about Cyborg Superman's new Fifty Two design just bothers me. Well, that's because well, so here's the reason I didn't think that this whole shit was set in the new 52 is because in the new 52 cyborg superman is actually zor-el so yeah like but they use take hey, shot for this uh, yeah so I, so that's why i thought this was set in the pre-52 universe because it's like oh that's hank henshaw not zor-el so but the, uh, here's the crazy thing lex mentions well, people mention in various different DC, other DC uh, films that were made in that same style. That's the new 52 continuity. Hmm. All right. So they adapted weird new 52 shit in the uh, using old stories, which is crazy. But when it came to the two Batman Elseworld story films, Jesus Christ. You did not give me proper warning with uh, the doom that came to Gotham. There. What do you mean? I di- I gave everybody proper warning that this shit was cosmic horror, <laughs> gory, and <laughs> fucked up. What meant, sir, what I meant, sir, is that two prominent characters just dying that I thought were going to survive, well, sir. It was a spoiler, so I, of course I'm not going to say that in screen time. Not everybody is like you, Tony. Not everybody likes to hear spoilers ahead of time. Well, I was just saying that, my God, the amount of murder. It's a, crazy. It's a Lovecraft Same. story. There's a fuck ton of there's always a fuck ton of murder. Well, yes, I know that, but I was just surprised. Like I was not mentally prepared for that. Well which was the benchmarks of what I thought made that film great. Yep. So you're welcome. Yeah, but it's like, Jesus, to do it, man. And then uh, Justice League War, just an adaptation of the new 52 Justice League. Johns is a sad boy attempt at writing the league when he was, it was... Out, when it was outclassed by Justice League International at the time. That movie was all right. I, I liked it. I liked the movie. 
the comic run itself, Brian. He was more shitting on the comic. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Because if you recall, Brian, back at that time, the only reason why Justice League International, at least the prevailing theory, was that International was doing way more than his book. Well, yeah. So that, like, that, that, oh, yeah. Well, that's because DeMatteis and Giffen didn't give a fuck about the New 52 and just wrote it like it was pre-52. And then also they had Dark there, too. Which I liked Justice League Dark. It oh, that's great. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, the Justice League Dark movie was good, too. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. Justice League Dark movie? It, it's not on Max, which makes me big mad. It's not? No. I swear I saw it up there. And uh, which one are you talking about? Yeah, because there are two. There's Justice League Dark and there's Justice League Dark Apocalypse, which is fucking oh, insane. Apocalypse War, without seeing... Some of the I was saving Apocalypse War for last because it's the last thing in the continuity. Oh yeah, it is the last thing in the continuity. But you all you also need Justice oh. League War, uh, Justice League Dark for context because it's you know. Yeah, that's what I want. Justice League Dark is not there. It's just Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. Weird, huh? Weird. It's be big well, mad. Also, the Justice League Dark, the original one, it's kind of weird because it mostly focuses on Batman. Yeah. It's like it's kind of like it's like bat it's like Batman damned without the bat dong. Oh dear god. Cuz you know Batman damned is just a Justice League dark story with Batman in it. Oh dear god, that is hilarious. All right. Yeah, um, what else you got? Watched episodes pop up on uh That one Superman show. Oh, my adventure of Superman. I haven't watched. Yeah. I haven't I... watched the latest episode, but uh, I, I've been. I I've been enjoying it. it. What? Watching it, Brian? You should just be watching it. It's a good show, Brian. Because, like you mentioned last time, Jay, you were the one who said that. Watching shows week to week is a little bit harder for you now. I mean, yeah, but this show doesn't really do cliffhangers like Superman and Lois, so I can handle that. Yeah. So my initial thought was hoping to binge it. it it's I, you actually get a better. I think I personally think with this one you get a better experience week to week. Mm-hmm. But I definitely that's think just me. So. Maybe it's, I mean, maybe I... it's because it feels more like an anime than a cartoon. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of anime, by the way, decided to also watch, uh, keep myself updated on My Happy Marriage. Should be buck wild in that show still. Nice. And then I decided to watch a couple of episodes before recording of Baki Hanma Season 2. Cool. These big buff men are still doing buck wild shit. As to be expected in Baki. Well, and for the folks at home, the these big buff men are fighting a caveman. Yep. And he has the most notorious name of them all. One word. Pickle. <sighs> and when you see how this man works, shit's crazy. But that's just it for Screen time for me. All right. So, jumping from screen time, it's time we move into trailer talk. And that is the segment for those who are new to the podcast, where Brian curates a playlist of trailers, which you can find on YouTube in the description down below. And then we cut very quickly with the magic of editing and then come back to you with our rapid fire thoughts on the trailers. So, Brian, tell the folks at home what trailers we will be covering tonight. We have an interesting list tonight, people. We're starting off with, I shoot you not, this is the name of it. 
Slotherhouse. Slotherhouse? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's an upcoming, looks like it might be indie, slasher about a, a girl who wants to look good for her sorority, so she adopts a sloth, but the sloth turns out to be murderous. Okay. What? But it kills really, really slowly? I have no idea. Okay. Uh, I heard the... Pr- I saw the title, heard the premise, was like, add that to the list. Okay. And then... Then we've got a very interesting title, which I shit you not, this is the actual title. Dicks the Musical. Okay. Is it a musical about the sporting goods store? No, it's a... It's a movie adaptation of the screenplay um, of the same name. And basically, it's adult. It's adult uh, parent trap. Where these two adults find out that, that they're twins. And so they trick their parents into getting back together or try to. Oh, no. But they, but they're just, you know, but they're just being dicks in the process. Uh, I mean, all I know is, uh, also in the movie is uh, Megan Mullally. Cool. Nathan Lane. Nice, Timon. And Megan the Stallion. Oh, okay. Um, Interesting. Okay. And then from one. Interesting named to another. We've got Bottoms. Brian, what the fuck is in your algorithms, bro? What is in this oh, algorithm of yours, bro? Um, this is actually being done by the uh, the same director as the critically acclaimed film from last year. I think it was called Shiva. Okay. Um, that and doesn't tell what me this anything. is about. Is it is about two two young teenage girls who, in order to impress girls, start a fight club at their school. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yep. Brian, and I, it's a I, red I, band I, trailer. I'm still questioning your algorithms, there, buddy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. We're getting back to more normal stuff. Um, we're getting another Netflix K drama. This one called Mask Girl. Okay. It's a it's about a reclusive, shy woman who comes alive and gets real popular online after she like goes online while putting on a mask, like a literal mask. Mm-hmm. Thought you'd appreciate it because it's kind of VTuber esque or in that same general vicinity. True. Then a K drama from Hulu. All right. Called Moving. Okay. It's about three teenagers that find out they have superpowers and they find out that they got them from inheriting them from their parents. All right. How does that connect to the title at all? Yeah. Moving? Yes. I don't know. Then another one interesting. Who is Aaron Carter? Uh, He is a pop star who unfortunately (laughs) passed away from, you know, overuse of drugs. Actually, it's spelled E-R-I-N. Okay. It's, from what I can see, it's kind of like a... uh, a woman goes to Spain for vacation and gets held up at like a drugstore robbery, but her secretive dark past comes to light through it apparently, and people are after her now. Okay. Uh, then, uh, we have, um, this one is a little bit older of a trailer, but the movie's about to come out and we never showed it, so I thought I'd include it. 
You guys have never heard of it? The Last Voyage of Demeter? Nope, never heard of it. Oh, uh, from- I know what you're talking about. Isn't it that it's this very fascinating uh, voyage that mm-hmm. was a tradition that led to a bunch of scientists getting lost in the Arctic, right? I think so. And, and the crazy thing is this expedition lost completely. Oh, shit. So, like, so it went full of Roanoke? Interesting. Well, at least in the movie, it seems like, and I don't know if this is the same thing that Tony's talking about now after he hears this, but the reason could be is because apparently on board, they have the one and only Dracula. Oh, oh, it's actually, oh, it's just that part of uh, the Dracula novel that. Oh yes. yeah, it's literally. Exactly. Oh okay, so it's. I remember that part of the novel. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I realized it was. It's that part of the novel just into a whole movie. Interesting. And then, lastly, we're gonna do something different again, something new. But, um, it's a video game that it. The trailer is a little bit older, but it's about to come out. And if y'all hadn't heard about it, I thought it was right up your alley. It's called Stray Gods. Okay. Okay. The full title is Stray Gods, the role-playing musical. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, that's, that's hilarious. And uh, it, it story involves, like, the Greek gods and... It's got a lot of critical role and critical role adjacent voice actors. Huh. Cool. Oh, that's just too funny. I love it. All right. So that is the list of trailers we'll be reacting to tonight. You can find that playlist linked in the description down below. And we shall return soon via the magic of editing. After this quick word from the sponsors we do not have. And we're back. Alright, so we got some interesting trailers this time around. Some some the streak has been broken. Yeah. Yeah. I mean luckily it wasn't a whole batch of cravens. So, you know, we don't have to no. boot, we don't have to boot you off the podcast. Um and one looks like it was bad on purpose. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, the, the okay, so let's start with that. The Sloth movie, I liked it because I'm a fan of stupid B horror movies. I watched oh, yeah. yeah. I wa- I unironically watched Zombievers because it was hilarious. Um, Zombievers is hilariously dumb. Yep. <laughs> Dude, I also watched in the theater, not just because it was my job, Piranha Double D. Oh, oh my nice. god. Um but yeah, that one that one was fun. Like I didn't hate that one. I, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, especially when the like the dude did that lackluster title drop and everybody was like, eh. Uh so that that was good. The, the other good one, uh, the final voyage of the meet of uh, the last voyage of the Demeter, uh, looks like an awesome kind of claustrophobic take on Dracula. It's a it's a new angle, uh, and yeah. it looks pretty. Mm-hmm. It looks pretty cool. Oh yeah. And you yeah. know, it's always good to see Sir Davos. Yeah, Sir Davos doing Sir Davos things. Yep. Yep. And saying like classic horror stuff in that great voice, like, mm-hmm. oh God, what have we done? Which, well, like, fun fact for you guys, like, our buddy Darth is a big fan of this one horror movie that actually stars Sir, uh, Sir Davos. It's called Let Us Pray, and it's fucking awesome. It's a foreign yeah. film. If you ever get a chance, like, if you ever come across it somewhere, go give it a shot. It's a, it's a good watch. Um,. But yeah, so the other ones, 
Jonathan Field in the Fight Club one. Bottoms? Oh. Yeah, that's really fun. Personally, I feel like it could go either way. Um, I know y'all didn't hear about it, but uh, it was called Shiva Baby. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people had it on their top 10 of the year list last year. It's it's about a uh, young Jewish woman and all the uh, trials and tribulations that happen uh, when she has to live through a Shiva of a loved one, which, if you don't know what Shiva I is... I was just about to ask. I was like, I do not know what Shiva is. In the Jewish community, it, it's something that they do after a person dies. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think they spend like 24 hours in the house where the body is also there in a coffin. And it's just... You graze on food that has already been cooked, and you just do mourning for several hours. I think it's like either 12 or 24. That sounds super depressing. It is, but it's also like a way to reminisce about the dead person and I, your no, life no, with no, them. No, I get it. But I, like, I don't know, just in my head, I'm like, oh, that just sounds like, yeah, sure. It's, it's, a, it's a good way to reminisce and like, you know, talk about good memories, but also like, with the body in there, that just feels a little, that just feel that just adds a bit of well, morbidity to it. Part of the part of the thing about the movie is that it's a modern it's like a modern Jewish woman mm-hmm. dealing with this ancient tradition. Like oh yeah. I think she sneaks off at one point to to take some of the Ah. Cause uh things are getting boring. But anyway, so maybe it was a bad trailer. I I think it could either be really good or really bad, but not in between. Yeah, I would just say the, 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 those jokes were several swings and several misses. Like I yes. like again, it could be a case of the the trailer just having bad jokes. But like I don't know, when a comedy trailer doesn't make me laugh, that's not a good sign. But the other, the other movie with a questionable title, yeah, Dicks. I thought that was actually pretty funny. I mean, you got, yeah. I mean, Nathan Lane is in it, man. Uh, that that dude is a national treasure. Love that guy. Um, and uh, just the the numbers seem pretty funny. Uh, Meg seems cool in it. I'm sure a lot of people would pay to you know have her uh put them in a collar and drag them around it's definitely somebody's yeah. fantasy call them a bitch i mean dude she yeah. she, she, she she's a tall thick woman i mean like you know uh, yeah. there are definitely cool. plenty of people who are into that i would want to oh be yeah home. that's perfectly acceptable <laughs> i mean case in point just how damn popular that song got. Oh, yeah. I mean, the video is pretty great. Uh, yeah. Yep. And also, it got it got popular because, you know, people were flipping out about it. Uh, Facts. Uh, but, yeah. So, that one is fun. Um... What, 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 uh, Mask Girl. Oh, Mask Girl yeah. was another... It, so I finished Celebrity uh, on my own time. It reminds me a lot of Celebrity, like even down to the plot twist, which is why I didn't really like was shocked at the plot twist. I hear you. Uh, it, it has a lot of the same vibe, but that's not a bad thing. I enjoyed Celebrity. Uh, like I actually think it, it probably would have been a good one to cover on the podcast, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I might check, happen. I might check this one out on the like on my own time. One that I thought was gonna be good, but looks pretty meh, is uh, what was it called? Moving. Moving. Yeah. Again, the name was so bad I even forgot it. Yeah. Again, how the fuck does the title connect to it? No one in there had telekinesis. I was looking for somebody with telekinesis to make the title make sense. 
But no, yeah, I wanted. I guess maybe because one person has flight. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, but like, really? I don't know. It feels like a generic attempt at heroes. Yeah. Generic heroes. Oh no. And like, I don't know. I even as somebody who likes superhero shit, it well, it, mm -hmm. it it didn't have a it didn't have a weird twist to hook me in the same way as like, um, I, what the fuck was that British show called? Misfits. Misfits. There you go. Thank Misfits. you. Oh, that was great. Love I loved Misfits. that show. That was that was yeah. heroes with a twist, and I enjoyed the fuck out of that. Uh, but like, there was no real twist here. It was just kind of generic. Oh, people have powers. When I saw, when I heard those synopsis and everything, I was expecting, like, misfits, but like similar style to like all the K dramas that have been popular yeah, lately. Like, like dude, all of us like, are dead. Like, if it was, if it was like a misfits meet bloodhounds. I would be one hundred percent in because Bloodhounds is oh, still yeah. the shit. That's still in like my one of my favorite shows we've covered so Which, far. Also, also based on webtoons. Yeah. Which, uh, by the way, side note, I should have mentioned this earlier, but I didn't think that it married a full news story. Uh, if you didn't hear, DC has announced that uh, all of their webtoons they're going to uh, print. Yes. Oh. I can get a Wait. collection of Batman Family Wayne Family Adventures and there's a ton of one. <laughs> nice. Finally I'll have a ton of book. <clears throat> what? But yeah, uh, it's true. There are very, there are very few Zatana books out there and the ones that exist are out of print and expensive. God damn. True. But uh lastly uh Straight gods? Oh, that looks fun. That looks I might actually do that on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Mr. JBT. Um, oh, yeah, indeed. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. it looks like a fun time. But yeah, um, so that's it for trailer talk. So, um, unlike every other episode of the podcast, and this is going to be a tradition all this month with the movies. Uh, there isn't really going to be a spoiler-free portion here, so if you have not seen They Clone Tyrone, uh, this is your uh, chance to get out. Come back after you've seen the movie, and then tell us your thoughts in the comments down below, well, and we'll feature it in the future comment quarter. This one especially, you can't really tell your thoughts without spoiling. Yep, and uh, for those of you who don't know, it is on Netflix if you want to go check it out, so, you know, oh, yeah. that's where you go. Thanks for watching. If you're dipping out here, hopefully we'll see you mm -hmm. after you uh, watch it and then come back. But for everybody else, let's get to talking. I have mixed feelings about this movie. I have mixed feelings. Like, oh. I So I really like the message. I really like the message. I really like mm. the acting in this movie, but I don't like the execution. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. So okay. Here, so here's my here. So here's my thought process. Right. I really like the message of the whole. Like you know, we uh in or in order to in order to take our communities back, we got to band together and you know make the change ourselves kind of thing. That, that was the, the whole message behind the movie. I like that. I think the acting is really well done. But in terms of the execution, what I didn't like, and yeah, it, you know, it's perp it's, it, you know, it was done on purpose, but I also just didn't like how it was handled. It was, they just kind of threw a lot of stereotypes like out there and none of, like, the characters didn't really have depth beyond the cliches of their stereotype. Like, you know, Yo-Yo was a hoe who, shocking surprise, is actually really smart and intelligent and, you know, is selling herself short. Cliche as fuck. Uh, you know, you got generic pimp uh, Slick Charles. Great performance. Very fun. 
very generic, stereotypical character. Fontaine, just kind of your stereotypical drug dealer with a heart of gold that I've seen a million times in hood movies and fucking, you know, every uh -huh. TV show on power, in real life, within my family. Um... That was the point. I, like but I said, at least especially with the last two, no, they were genetically made to no, do that. No, no, no. Like I said, it's. I'm not like I'm not saying it wasn't done on purpose. I'm just saying I didn't like how it was executed. Like I know why it was done. I just I just didn't like it personally because it it just it just felt like I don't know. This felt. Like, it was presenting what people thought, uh, like, think hood life is like instead of what hood life actually is. It was just kind of like your generic portrayal of what the hood is on TV. Well, mm -hmm. If you notice, because I didn't notice this until, like, Watching a reaction of it and like people playing it out. Uh -huh. When you look at the world that they're in, it's very anachronistic. Yeah, I was I, I was gonna bring that up. It it like the the uh, yeah the uh, like I I was also confused because it was modern, but this felt like a black exploitation film. Well, that yeah, was done on purpose because. because because that was that was supposed to hint at you that this is all a simulation, basically. And I I've just never but been a is... I've never been a fan of the this was all a simulation twist. So well, that was a that was sometimes a... I'm not, but I do like movies where it's a uh, you go back and you see things that you didn't see the first time, like. Like, I don't know about you, but the first time around, I did not register that the per that the what looked to be homeless person that was running down the street that got picked up by the black car. Uh -huh. that that was first. That was the first him. Uh -huh. He didn't die from the shootings. Yeah. Uh, cause you because yeah, I mean you can you can you can hear you can hear John Boyega's voice. That was him, yeah. I could, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I I fig I figured I figured that when I when I was watching it, and all the stuff that the homeless guy says. Oh yeah, like pathetic shit, man. I don't know. I just personally, I just I I don't, I was I was like I again I like the message. I I think like that me the message is very important, and I uh and I liked, you know the. Like what they were pointing out with what they were making the commentary on, it was just kind of like how they were doing the commentary felt very ham fisted to me. I, I well, I wasn't, I wasn't really, I wasn't really feeling it. Um, well, I thought by the uh, by the time that it got to the whole grape drink, that that would become. Evident that, that was done on purpose. I mean, yeah. I just again, it just I it just didn't click for me, personally. I I, I thought it's that, weird for me to talk about this too because uh, let's be honest here, you are the only person here of color. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I I don't know maybe maybe that's why I feel like this, uh, but uh it just it feels oh it it felt disingenuous in a way, like I don't know how to describe it really like. Ah, I'm having a. This is this is so weird not having words when I'm so good at talking out of my ass. But well, uh, fun fact: this was done by the same director as uh, Creed Two. Oh, 
Oh, so Ryan Coogler's brother. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jewel Taylor is his name. Oh, I thought Ryan Coogler's brother could have directed Creed 2. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I I I uh, I probably... Oh shoot. He he worked on he worked on uh Creed 2. Okay, I was like it was definitely Ryan Coogler's bro- uh, Ryan Coogler's brother who directed Creed 2. Um And then Michael B Jordan directed Creed 3. But yeah, uh well, so Tony, what did you think of it? Uh think of it? Well, to be honest, a lot of the social commentary parts really captivated me. Mm. Even though I saw a lot of... I mean, I may not understand it, but I kind of get where you're coming from, Jay. Where it's all of these more so negative stereotypes just kind of being presented in that way i hope i'm getting that right oh yeah yeah see like i know it was done on purpose i know that like this is shown that like this because they're being controlled it's because they're being experimented on and manipulated uh but also think about the other message that the villain was sending right the whole assimilation is the only way we can survive i hated that and i get you're supposed to hate that he's the bad guy but like Mm -hmm. That just felt gross. Like, yeah, it, it felt gross to cause, me cause too. Because like, I I I enjoyed the movie when it was talking about like, because like, again, I didn't re- necessarily have a problem with the negative like the negative stereotypes at first. It wasn't until the end where we got to the bad guy's speech where I was like, all right. I liked this movie up until here, and then this is where I was like. I uh, this doesn't feel right. This isn't like in the same way that like a you know because like I've seen plenty of movies uh recently like anything Jordan Peele has done has been like a horror mm-hmm. film that did social commentary. Get Out right. is you know obviously very obvious like a, a movie about you know microaggressions that white people have towards people of color and how you know they have to fit in and you know that has such a very interesting commentary and you know twist to it uh nope is all about you know code switching and the different person you are when you are like you know in a room with like white people and you got to be respectable versus who you are as you and so it's represented by your different selves in Nope, or, or not Nope, uh, Us. I haven't seen Nope, so I don't know what the, the social commentary and twist for Nope is. But all of those are handled really well. This, it felt like an attempt at that, and it was almost there. And then they forced that last part in, and I was like, nah. Nah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm good, Chief. Yeah, I, I can I can see where you're coming from with that, man. It it does feel a bit odd in the grand scheme of things. It, like I it, can't really put it into words either. Because no, like because like because like it felt very contradictory, right? Like, yeah, because yeah, because you because you have this whole message of like people coming to people coming together and like, you know, taking the government down. But then at the same time, you also present this like whole respectable uh, respectability politics shtick, which Mm -hmm. doesn't really fit. And then you have that post credit scene where like there uh, where, you know, you, you see Los Angeles Fontaine, who is Tyrone. And, yeah. like, I get the message behind that. Like, it's supposed to be, like, there is a Tyrone everywhere, and, you know, what we need to do is come together Ooh. and change that so that, you know, we don't have more Tyrones. We have more, you know, people that are more upstanding. But, again, that also leans into the whole respectability 
politics and well, cool as shit. Well, dude, if you also remember, though, Kiefer Sutherland, when he was talking about the whole experiment, he was saying that it was nationwide, that there were multiple cities. Oh, yeah. So this was just one of the cities. Oh, no, I, I'm saying I get, like I said, I get the message. Like there, there's, there, like there, there's a Ty, there's a Tyrone everywhere, and like yeah, they they set it up. But I, but and I thought it was clever how you didn't understand the like meaning of the title until then. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I got it pretty quickly as soon as they revealed the clone. Yeah. Well, who Tyrone was. I mean, once they revealed that there were clones, you know, obviously Tyrone had to be a clone. Kinda would be able to get two and two together. Yeah, time. but we didn't meet anyone named Tyrone. Yeah, but like obviously, you know, if there's a whole operation of clones, like if there's a bunch of clones, you know, not all the clones are gonna be named Fontaine. Like they're obviously the ones here are gonna be named Fontaine, because Fontaine is the one who lives here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess I didn't think that there would be multiple clones of this one person in multiple areas. So, Cause, cause, okay, because the, the whole the whole metaphor and the whole social commentary, right, is the fact yeah. is the fact that like there is a Tyrone everywhere. The metaphor is there's always gonna be a drug dealer, a dope boy, a pimp in every hood out there, and the message is we need to get together and. We need to get together, change our communities, make our communities better, which is great. But also, mm -hmm. the, th the thing about this that is is a, it's a very slippery slope in terms of like politics, right? Is a thing called respectability politics, and what respectability politics is is for people of color. Um, there's this there's this whole expectation of you have to act proper around white people you can't use slang you can't you have to you know fix your posture pull your pants up do all the do all this stuff to impress the white people so you can have a better life and that's the vibe i like with that well, that was the vibe I got from this, and then the fact that we sh we show the other we, the other Tyrone who is a you know a gangbanger and all you know has the teardrop tattoo and all this shit, it it felt like it more leaned into that aspect of things for me. That was the read I well, got off of it. Well, dude, it's not a it's not a uh, like random thing that the one person who was pushing that was the one who died. Like I said, I know, I, I said, I mentioned it earlier. I know he's a bad guy. I know, like, I, I, I know that's a whole thing, but the fact that you have that in there mixed in with this message of togetherness and bettering the community, the read I got off of it personally was in order to Bring our com we got to bring our community together to make our community like that to make our people more respectable, and I I don't know, it just I saw it more as as a as a fuck that we don't need to do that. It's killing him. We're gonna be ourselves. And I mean, yeah, okay, but like and it, he and if you notice. He does use, he's smart and uses their own thing against them and uses the fact that they're underestimating him, that he put together the code word to get the other clone to kill him. And so they underestimated him, so he killed them. All right. I, I don't know. I just, it just didn't really... But you get where I'm coming from, right? Like, I I definitely see where you're. Coming. I guess a little, but we're different here because I actually really enjoyed the film. I'm not saying I didn't like it. I I I really no. liked the oh. film up until that point, and then it really lost me because I was I was re I was really pushing for like the whole the whole vibe of like you know togetherness for the community and all that, uh, but then. Like, 
with 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 like the you know after after the bad guy was killed uh I, like the whole the bad guy's whole motive and then after the bad guy was killed and oh like if they had just ended on if they had just ended on Fontaine Yo-Yo and uh Slick Charles going off to Memphis and you know exposing this shit all around the world I would have been like I would have been like, all right, cool. That was great. But then they add that extra little push of, well, you see that here? Every hood is this bad. There is a, there's a Tyrone everywhere. Every every hood's got to be fixed. Every hood's got to be cleaned up. I, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like I saw that more as sequel bait. Well, actually... Now this, this is just me just looking at it. Okay. I definitely agree where you're coming from with that, Jay. I felt like it where the film ended, that's the perfect end with uh, Fontaine, Slick, and Yo-Yo. Going I agree with that. The bike. Then you get to the Cali part. And I think, personally... For me, it was more extending and just kind of reaffirming what we already know, mm -hmm. which is a big no-no in yeah. film. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now that now that you're saying it like that, I can get that. I well, I completely okay. understand that because um because uh this I think part of the reason why I like this is because. It harkens back, uh, I said this off camera, to uh, one of my, like, honestly, one of my favorite films of all time, uh, Cabin in the Woods, which, uh, huge spoiler for that, uh, y'all have seen it, right? Yeah, yeah. Just making sure. Um, if it had gone on after the, the Elder God thing, had killed, and they did, like, one more scene where it was another one of the sites, maybe the Japan site, that would have undermined things. So, I get what you're saying. And, and, and that's what I mean. It undermines mm -hmm. the whole message by, once again, just kind of showing that the cycle isn't going to end. You kind of, you ended on this weird, dour note when I thought the whole point was that we're trying to make the shit better. And then you show me a place that is worse. Okay, so here's mm -hmm. the analogy I think you're trying to make, Jay. Mm -hmm. Trying to have an uplifting ending, but then you sent it come crashing down and show the cesspit again. That's what I'm saying. And it like it well, felt yeah. it, it felt like a like what what was the what was the point of watching this whole thing if like Shit's just if this was just you know baby shit compared to what we have over here, yeah. Because, um, maybe this is because of my uh Caucasian ignorance and all of that, but uh, I didn't realize this the first time around. But my man's is a full on uh crypt, he was a blood actually, blood. Sorry. <laughs> What? He had he had, he had a he had a red bandana and, was, and made the word blood with his hands. Yeah, and oh. this is why Brian, I try not to just say things that I don't fully understand. <laughs> well, hey, I'm obviously not going to make any gang signs because you do. Yeah, definitely not. But definitely I, not. Uh, and it is just a weird, weird, weird coincidence that Jay and I are both wearing red. Red's just my favorite color. I have a lot of yeah. I, I have a lot of red in my closet. Although, and I, I like I, this I, color on me. Although I, I did I I did I did I did live in an area where where wearing red uh, does keep you out of trouble. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, but mm. here's something that I find very fascinating about the mystery aspect of the film. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of another one of my favorite movies. I mean, I will say this ahead of time. This is one of the best movies I've seen all year. Oh yeah, it's a very well-made movie. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. But the thing that it, I'm going to compare it to is another film that I love, and it's called Brick. Oh. No. I've heard of it, but I hadn't seen it. A uh, fantastic film. I've Basically, seen Brick. Um, he knows what I'm talking about, right? Yep. So, Which, uh, fun fact. Three. Sorry, thought you were done. My bad. Continue. My, I was trying to get to my point, Brian. So I like the mystery aspect that both films make. It's this, this slow, kind of subtle build-up to this climax of a conclusion to solve that mystery. But where I think Brick kind of made its point, it ended where it ended. Whereas it kind of, uh, whereas They Clone Tyrone kind of lingered on that point a little too much. Yeah. Also, the, so, o- the also, I hear you. also the other thing that I didn't like, just to kind of chime in, uh, is I I really didn't like Kiefer Sutherland just explaining the whole like explaining oh, yeah. everything, it's like pausing the movie to explain everything. Because I was like, if you if you have if you've been watching this movie and you can't figure this out, why? How do you yeah. not know this? Yeah, no. We're not yeah, stupid. Although. The whole thing with, uh, I will say that, uh, he did explain how, uh, how Yo-Yo wasn't a clone, but that could easily just be explained by them going ahead and jumping to the scene where he controls them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, like, I don't know, that part felt clunky, too. I just, I don't know, it was weird. Yeah. But I, I, I did like, um, like you said, all the characters, like yeah, no, yeah, Jamie yeah. Fox and yeah. and all of his, uh, all, all of, his, of his little schemes, yeah, all, all, yeah. all of his hoes, well, also his schemes, yeah, and uh, how he mean, tricked uh, he tricked them, and then at the end where he tricked Kiefer, yeah, I um, mean that was really clever, yeah, like. Like it's it's a very well acted, very well written film, and like oh, yeah. I uh, like I my my biggest issue is I think it just kind of overstays its welcome and it undermines its own point. And if it like it makes me angry that it undermines its own point because its point is something that's very important that I you know oh, yeah. as a person of color like totally agree with and like sympathize with but like then you just you just go and like basically tell me well then what's the fucking point like i hear you and uh i'm curious to know what your opinion of the uh of the boiled chicken joke i thought that was funny i thought that was funny it was, and it, and to me, it also showed that uh, in this movie where it's addressing stereotypes, no one group is uh Now, to be fair, safe. now, like, to defend the boiled chicken out there, like, you, boiled chicken actually can be very delicious if you, yes. like, if you serve it in a very, a seasoned broth. Just... Fucking yes. regular ass boiled and water boiled chicken. You're a monster or a serial killer. Uh, I don't know. Well, I, I don't know why you're into that. Like he said, not even salt and pepper. Yeah, no, that's 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 some serial killer shit. Yeah, no thanks. Um, yeah, that is. But yeah, I just I don't know. Especially because like. I, I I I went into this with like everybody talking about like comparing it to Jordan Peele stuff and saying uh, how saying how good it was. So I was expecting some so Jordan Peele stuff. This is your this is your it, this yeah this is my the, this is my Puss in Boots: The Last Witch. How you felt about Puss in Boots: The Last Witch is how I feel yes. about They Clone Tyrone. Because. Because I watched it the day that it came out, so I didn't have any preconceptions about it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those wondering what he's talking about, yet again, we're referring to uh, last week, which was 
regrettably lost. Yep. Yeah, so Brian Brian watched Push and Boot to the Last Witch, which Tony and I like both loved and you know it, like we're like, oh man, I can't wait for Brian to see this. This movie is great. Um and then Brian was like, I liked it, but I it, I, it was I feel like it was overhyped. And I'm like, what? Um, I still thought that it was really, really good, just not great, like they said. And again, to each their own. But yeah, that's how I feel about they clone Tyrone, especially because like I love the like social commentary horror genre that has opened up with Jordan Peele. I can see that, and also. Critics are raving about this movie. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, I know, I know, it's not a uh, judgment to go by, but Rotten Tomatoes has this at a 97. That's what I'm saying. Everybody's like, everybody was like talking up this movie, and I was excited. I like, you know, I like the actors. You know, I. I was I was super down. Every Jamie Foxx movie that I've watched on Netflix has been fire. Uh, that Day Shift movie where he's a vampire hunter, cool as fuck. And I love Snoop Dogg's character. Um, like, but like this, it it just like it was so close to like being there, and it just it missed the opportunity. I I see what you're saying, but don't want the bad to outshine the good because there were a lot of good moments. For like, sure, that creep that creepy yeah. scene where they at the uh, I think it was the strip club where they uh, possess all the people. Oh, oh yeah, God. yeah, that was freaky. Um, yeah, my my personal favorite scene uh, and exchange was when like they break down the plan and you have uh, Isaac the other drug dealer she's like oh, rehearsing yeah. his line and it's like so you're telling me some Bill Nye the science guy looking motherfuckers are cloning people yeah it's like, all right, all right, how was that yeah no that was it that was it Denzel book of Eli or training day book of Eli <laughs> no 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 run it back run it back run it back <laughs> which uh to be fair though I do really like the Book of Eli. But let's be honest, man. The Book of yeah. Eli ain't no training day. King Kong no. ain't got shit on no. me. I will admit that. Also, also kind of, uh, I think we did miss out on uh, the opportunity of having Mila Kunis as an action star. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, man. But she was in that, remember? She was. I remember. I I, I I enjoyed the Book of Eli, but yeah, uh, there's there a lot of good stuff. Uh, I thought a lot of the gags, I thought a lot of the gags were funny. Like, the, the, like uh, when they realized that they put the shit in the chicken, it reminded me of uh, mm -hmm. the, the Boondocks episode uh, w mm -hmm. where, where uh, like they were out of chicken at Popeyes and everybody was scrapping. Uh, that that shit was. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, and uh, mm. earlier on with Slick, where uh, he had the dude at gunpoint, and but he was high on that stuff. Oh my god. Yep. And he accidentally shot the dude. Well, he he, 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 shot, he shot the dude because uh, fucking Yo-Yo uh, was fucking playing with chemicals, and she dropped, the, she dropped the beaker, scared herself, and screamed, which caused Slick to You're then that, shoot the we, afro kid. We also find out that later on that that stuff also causes muzzle spasms yep but also that kid the like origins of that kid yep were freaky yeah yep yeah that, Not a fair that, that. that's what happens when they're trying to white and black people well okay and like I, again i thought that was a very clever like commentary on the whole respectability politics thing because so like to explain respectability politics a little bit more, right? So part part of that is like, you know, you can't you, you can't have your hair all wild. You gotta you gotta look like the white people. You gotta you know have your hair combed and gelled up, and you gotta look nice. You can't be out here like 
you know, just with a like big ass, big ass fro curls or or dreads because you look threatening. You, you know, you might scare the motherfucker. And so, like, I I thought that was a really again really cool social commentary, and like I I, th I thought that I thought that was great. And then, you know, undercut later. But yeah, that was really cool. I like that. Um, and then the really unsettling part was seeing like the evolution test tubes of the different like fontaines yeah and then we get down to like the, the straight up white dude and it's just like well damn mm -hmm. so that's what john boyega looks like in whiteface huh but they didn't like call too much attention to it it was just a background set piece yeah but like you know so freaky shit and, oh yeah like and the whole entire fact that uh he's the bad guy of the film but he's not the like top dog in the organization he's like bottom uh yeah he, he's more like middle he's not not bottom i would say like upper middle management upper middle yeah. management but the fact that there's more to him which the way they handled it was now that you're talking about was not the best yeah but <laughs> I uh, I also think it's a it was a wasted opportunity uh with uh, with his plot line because you have the thing with the little brother but you don't elaborate on it. You don't tell me why this like yeah he was shot but you didn't explain to me why him being shot led you into this. You didn't say like you know he uh he was shot um he was shot and just left there because he was doing hood shit and so i got i i, I uh you know and he looked threatening to this white person so i gotta make sure we no longer are threatening to white people so no we don't have to lose our people anymore like and i'm not saying he had to say it out loud but like show it right why didn't we get yeah, that like like he like, good on John Boyega for selling it, but, like, the whole fact of him talking about just... He just goes on the monologue about cleaning the his brother, and then he's like, oh, then now I'm... Yeah, evil. like, yeah, that, that has, like, okay, that's that's traumatic, but, like, okay, well, okay, you're, we're still missing a big step here, buddy. Like, again, once we got to that point, that's what kind of ruined the movie for me a little bit. Like, is like, cause his motivation just really fell off, and I was like, "All right, this feels gross." Also, I get, I get his uh, his spot in the commentary and like why he was there, but I do feel like Chester could have not been there. Yeah, he he was he was just a plot device to kill homie, uh, like Fontaine Prime. Is what I'm gonna call them, and and yeah. I guess and I guess maybe in the commentary to say this is how yeah this is how people this hard is, for me to say no I I got it I'll say it this is how people see us we're just weapons and again that's pretty cool when they introduce Chester and they explain that Chester is also a clone yeah this is one of the only two ways people see us they either see us as hood rat drug dealers or killers because one thing of note here which may have been on purpose to fill that role, but Chester never speaks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, yeah. Any other I, uh, any other thoughts to, uh, to wrap up before we get into uh, ratings? No. Brian? Uh, uh I now that you're talking to me, I see the negatives. But I still really did enjoy this movie. Um, I think, given what it, what he was given, Kiefer Sutherland 
did an awesome job. Oh yeah, I I, like, I loved Keith Sutherland. Uh, just getting to do Jack Bauer one last time, but like a racist Jack Bauer. Yeah, like that final showdown with him, Yo Yo, and Jamie. Man, that was amazing. Address a pimp by his name, Brian. His name he he is a pimp named Slick Charles. I. Yeah, come on, Slick man. Slick Charles. It is just hard for what's, me to remember. What's the first track on a pimp's name, man? Yeah, man. What you Slick doing? Charles. Which I will admit, I will admit mm-hmm. that one of the thing now that I'm thinking about it, which could be a negative, uh-huh. is just how easy Slick Charles was able to to uh, get everyone together, and we really didn't see it. Bro. Again, I like no, no. I like that because I again, I think it's like uh, it was a good part of the commentary of like, in order to make change in the community, we had to bring the community together. I hear you. And like you know, it's it's a very much a mentality of like in neighborhoods of like you know, you, you mess with our people, we're gonna fuck you up. It it's like a it's like a smaller scale version of that uh, scene from Spider Man One. Where like oh, New York scene. Yep. You mess with oh, Spider Man. Yeah. You messing with New York. Yep, that was good. Uh also uh, this oh. had a lot of like good or the good smaller moments too. Uh-huh. Like uh like uh when they go to when Slick Charles goes to rescue Yo Yo, but she's rescued herself mm-hmm. and She's just like, oh, you care. Oh, one of, one of my favorite, more serious moments is when uh, Fontaine finally breaks down his mama's door, and they, oh, they're just yeah. that they're just that tape recording. Oh my god! Like That's John Boyega big... sold the hell out of that scene. Oh, that. I had my suspicions, oh, my but just to see that in practice and see yep. his breakdown. Yep. Oh my god. That yeah. was great. Because also you've got to remember that uh our original Fontaine who started off. Yep. He was like a glitch in the system. And the second Fontaine didn't remember the glitch that the first Fontaine had, so he was just going off of what Slick Charles and Yo Yo were telling him. I mean uh, like, te- no, I mean, te- no, it was the second, fo- no, the second Fontaine is the one that discovers the clone thing. First Fontaine didn't discover mm-hmm. shit. First Fontaine just got shot. <laughs> man, man, oh, God. True. Yeah. My bad. My bad. Well, it's been a while since I've seen this movie. All good. But, but yes, that movie was great. And uh, if you go to great levity moments, I know it was in the trailer. But that I'm going down. Classic Mary J. Blige song, by the way. Yeah. Um, Amen. Which, you know, a lot of people forget Jamie Foxx can sing. He is an amazing Mm -hmm. singer. Uh, Mm Fantastic. One of his, one of my favorite bits from his stand-up is his Fuck You song. Uh, fuck you! <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Oh man. Yeah, so I'm guessing he had a "fuck you" song before CeeLo did. He did actually. It was in it was in one of his early stand-up bits. Uh, that's cool. I'll, 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 Let's I'll, not I'll, get into CeeLo. I'll, I'll find it and uh, show you guys uh, off camera. But yeah, so final ratings. I- I'll start. I'm gonna give this movie a six point five out of ten. Oh, I liked it a lot. There were a lot. There's a lot of good to it. But derailing the message as hard as it did when I was so on board with your message just really fucked with me. So I'm giving it a six point five. I would watch it again. Um, and I'd probably be less harsh on it now that I actually, like, know where it goes. But off of a first watch, yeah, 6.5. Mm. All right. So, Tony? You know, with what we've kind of described about things that you brought to 
my attention and Brian's attention, what we all kind of discussed here, mm -hmm. I'll be uh, a point five above you, Jay. I'll give this movie a seven. All I right. really like this movie. I'm going to preface this. Like I said, it's one of the better movies I've seen all year. And I want to, and now, I, 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 and I do want to make it clear. Like I, you know, it might sound like I was poo pooing everything with this movie, but I did enjoy it a lot. Like it's, it's, it's just the fact that Whoa. I was so like so invested in what the movie was trying to say, and I felt like they really dropped the ball at the end. Six, six, and six point five is very low. I mean, it's still passing. Yeah. But it's the, the smallest that you can go without passing. Yeah. The, yeah. Which, I mean, which is how I felt about the movie. Like, you know, it, it, like it, if, if, they, if it had ended right there, if they had expanded more on Fontaine Prime, it would have been in like the 7, 7.5 area. That's where it would have been normally. But you really dropped the ball. In the messaging. Hmm. I mean, I'm with Jay on this one, Brian. It the messaging. No. Was I get poo poo. Yep. I get what you're saying, uh, but still, like I said before, it didn't uh, harsh it down that much for me because we talked about a lot of great well, stuff. Well, well, Brian. Also, I, I don't want to be that guy. You're white, I'm not. Of course I'm going to react to the message different than you because the message more directly impacts me than it impacts you. And also, uh, let's be honest, if we're going back to like Rotten Tomatoes, there are a lot more people like me probably there in the critics. Yeah, who don't get why this message is so fucked up. So, so I'm I'm not giving it like anywhere near the like top or perfect, but and I really hate to continue this trend for me of just doing flats, but um the tradition breaks for us, but it continues with Tony. Oh, uh. Well, I'm saying between you and Tony. Oh, okay. you and Tony have the point five. Yep. No, no, mine. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, because oh, yeah, because Tony, yeah, Tony's at the point five above me. Yeah, I got you. Uh huh. So, what's your rating? I'm, I'm going high, higher than Tony. Oh. Uh. I think. Now, keep in mind, this is also just based on the fact that. I didn't go in with any preconceptions or anything. I watched it like the day of release. So you've definitely made me walk it back some from what I initially thought. So for me, honestly, I think I'm going to give it a flat eight. All right. Cool. Okay. But yeah, you do. You. That it's was, uh, that was we clone Tyrone. Really good movie. Very well mm -hmm. acted. Honestly, it's definitely up there in terms of Netflix movies. I, I enjoyed mm -hmm. it a lot. It's definitely and it uh, has a lot of re uh, it has a lot of replay value for sure. Um definitely. like I I called definitely. I called most I called most of the shit like as it was happening, but like, you know, oh, yeah. for like for for some yeah. people who like aren't good at sol uh, figuring out twists, I'm sure it's going to be a fun ride to like get to that reveal. Uh, also, just like the replay of watching it and seeing like the smaller things that you missed. Yep, it's it's a very well uh, well uh, well put together movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, like, don't let the score fool you. Like, the mm. movie's great. I just don't agree with the message. But yeah, that is it for our episode on They Clone Tyrone, our first episode in our uh, movie months. But Brian, uh, go ahead and uh, hit us with the coming attractions for next week's episode of the podcast. Uh, 
Okay, more silence right, edited out. Next, next up. Sorry, I had to double check the list. Uh, because we've changed the schedule so many times in the last week. All good. But yeah, we're going to go action mm. and spies with uh, Heart of Stone starring Gal Gadot. Mm. I'm excited for this one. I always like seeing Gal Gadot in action flicks. Oh, yeah. And from the trailer, this seems like the uh, Wonder Woman 2 that we watched. Right? Basically. Pretty much. I'm excited for it. Uh, we react. Uh, this is, a, you know, continues the tradition of like a, tra a trailer we reacted to, uh, which we also reacted to the clone Tyrone trailer as well. Um, mm -hmm. So this will be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you guys are too. Uh, in the YouTube audience, don't forget to do all the YouTube things like comment and subscribe and Spotify people. Also, leave us a rating, favorite our podcast, follow us on Spotify. We want to continue to grow our audience. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed and we will catch you guys next week for another episode of the Channel Tasters podcast. Until then, we'll catch you later. Peace. <laughs>